as a fertility consultant i am definitely seeing that people coming to take a fertility opinion or a consultation is uh, rising and when it comes to ivf even ivf uh, i am seeing that it is really rising people are coming forward for various reasons to get their ivf treatment done now here today in this video i am going to shed light on what is uh, the ivf process what is a step by step guide that you need to know if you are someone who is wanting to go for ivf kind of a treatment so hey hi i am dr indu from samrath fertility urology center and i shall break it down uh, to the different steps that you need to know now when it comes to pregnancy it is definitely one's desire extreme uh, you know uh, kind of a desire that it should happen all naturally but then if it is not happening naturally then one is uh, uh, you know one should not be delaying the treatment of uh, any fertility treatment that the fertility expert has advised you so when it comes to ivf treatment then what are the indications so let me tell you about the few absolute indications where you have no other choice but to go for ivf only one is if the tubes are blocked if both the tubes are blocked or your tubes are diseased or disease tube uh, has been removed by laparoscopy then i think the only way that you can conceive is through ivf the number two reason is uh, if your uh, husband's count is very very low or if it is uh, no count at all you may need a needle aspiration then this kind of treatment or procedure will require ivf then there is a third category where both the couple both the uh, you know husband and wife the couples are all fine tests are normal and they have been trying for really a long period of time maybe they are younger still so they are trying for 2 years 3 years sometimes 4 years and still pregnancy has not happened then here again taking the treatment of ivf at the right time is really important now the fourth category is where women who are getting older and they have postponed their motherhood for various reasons could be academic could be professional or could be other Uh, you know personal reasons also so as age increases the egg count is going to go down and by the time they reach that stage then the time uh, they take for natural try may not be longer and even if they have tried they then want to explore the option of ivf so here is another category where ivf has to be done then one more category where there are some diseases which runs in the family and these are something that can be identified by doing uh, the genetic testing so here again ivf is really helpful for eliminating such diseased embryo then the last category i would say is now these days many people friends or younger generation they are seeing that their friends are conceiving more often than the with ivf kind of a treatment so here what happens here they want to take that control of their fertility it's like you know they want to freeze their embryos so that the couple takes the ivf treatment when they are ready uh, emotionally uh, physically and mentally so that's another category where couples are coming forward to go for ivf treatment and freeze their embryos so ivf is in vitro fertilization here what happens in vitro means outside the body now naturally the pregnancy uh, the egg and the sperm they are meeting fertilizing inside the fallopian tube in the woman's body right the in ivf this step the the part of uh, the process that takes place in the fallopian tube of a woman's uh, reproductive system that is taken care of in the laboratory so egg and sperm they are dealt with the fertilization is done either uh, naturally or with assistance and then the embryos are cultured in the laboratory inside the incubator so this is all about uh, what ivf is in the uh, laboratory setting so now uh, now you have to you have decided that you have to go ahead with the ivf treatment then how you should approach this now before you take the ivf treatment remember you have to deal with the situations or the problems that are going to be an hindrance to enhance your chances now what are they suppose you are obese then taking an action on that that is losing 5 to 10% only of your body weight will really make wonders if you are somebody who has a wrong eating habit diet pattern then please take care of that because your inner health is going to be a uh, kind of extrapolating to your cell health your egg health your sperm health so see to it that your diet nutrition is really up to the mark associated medical problems do not ignore do not delay like diabetes or a mildly elevated sugar people take it very lightly don't do that take control of that before you are taking this step because 
remember your environment is all that is going to be responsible for the egg environment and the quality of egg or the quality of the sperm so these things have to be dealt to before you start the ivf journey and before the ivf treatment starts generally there is a pre ivf evaluation that happens with the fertility expert where all these instructions would be given and you will be given the road map as to how you should be planning your ivf cycle and uh, what should be done now okay the day has come and you are starting the treatment for uh, going ahead with the ivf uh, procedure so the day 2 or day 3 of your menstrual cycle is the day where you see the doctor there are some protocols which starts before your menses start that is day 21 of your cycle also but the commonly run protocol is what i'm talking about so you go on day 2 day 3 of your menstrual cycle scans are done blood tests are done and then consultation happens and you begin with injections injection dose is decided based on various factors i'll not go into the detail of that now once that is decided you are actually taking injections every day so you can take it by yourself or you can get it administered by uh, you know with somebody's help now this goes on for nearly 10 to 12 days in this period of time you have to go to the doctor as and when you are told to visit generally around 4 visits to 5 visits of scan you have now the scan is generally done to know what it is basically to understand how many follicles are you developing that is the egg bag or the egg uh, bubble i would say now how many uh, how many such bubbles or egg bags are you producing and then when you are going to be ready for the egg collection so this is what is determined by doing regular scans and every visit you may have blood tests to understand whether everything is matching correlating so finally uh, maybe around day 13 of your cycle day 14 of your cycle the last triggering injection is given and that is really important because it matures your egg and after that 36 hours 34 to 36 hours later egg pickup procedure is planned so the egg pickup procedure is uh, actually done under anesthesia and anesthesia do need not worry this is one of the commonest question asked that is the injection given to the back no it is given through your vein and these anesthetic drugs effect last not more than 4 to 5 minutes so the time taken for me to uh, you know take out all your eggs will depend upon how many number of follicles you have grown if they are fewer than not more than 15 minutes if you have many follicles then maximum half an hour you may need to get this procedure done under anesthesia so once the procedure is done you are actually out of the anesthesia effect immediately but you are kept in the recovery room so that you are monitored to completely come into awareness and consciousness and you are not or you are tolerating the food that you have taken or the liquids that you have ingested without having any vomiting now this is about you so what happens in the laboratory as i am i you know i uh, take out all the follicular fluid that fluid will be containing the egg this is given to the embryologist and they do the uh, identification of the egg based on few factors and she will kind of um, you know identify with whatever number of follicles that i have aspirated and then she is then going to proceed with the uh, icsi procedure or ivf procedure so on the same day remember your husband is going to give a fresh semen sample and sometimes men may have to undergo needling of their testes to extract sperm so whether it is testicular sperm or ejaculate sperm this is what is utilized for uh, you know uh, helping the eggs get fertilized now once the fertilization uh, so here it is very very important the role of the embryologist is really important so so the embryologist is going to be you know somebody who is very experienced will know how to pick up the sperm which is the good one and the, 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 the this is a very basic uh, step but the experienced embryologist will know and whatever number of mature eggs are identified they are fertilized so if the semen sample is really really good then ivf also can be planned that is a natural fertilization in the laboratory or if there is any compromising factors in the sperm then icsi is done that is intra cytoplasmic sperm injection so once this is done they are then put inside the incubator where they stay they grow they divide for next 5 days so ideally an uh, a fertilized egg will be kept in the uh, incubator for 5 days that is till the day of blastocyst now uh, fifth day uh, the blastocyst forms 
Now it's not necessary that you know after uh, you have got around 15 eggs, all 15 will become blastocyst. So 30-40% chance that you are going to get um, uh, you know uh, for, uh, blastocyst to that extent. So if you have 10 eggs, maybe 3 to 4 blastocyst you will get finally on day 5. And that is then transferred back into the uterine cavity and this process of transferring the embryos into the uterine cavity, uh, remember it is very very simple. You would have gone through a mock embryo transfer before so you will have an idea what this transfer is going to be like so this step is uh, you know very very important very very critical but then very simple and very easy to perform if already we knew that there is no difficulty so once this is done then the uh, you know you are made to uh, wait for at least two weeks 12 days to 14 days minimum and during this 14 days, what do you do? You are given some medications to take and generally they will be simple medication, some progesterone tablets, folic acid uh, medication and a blood thinner at times and injections and all not necessary, not uh, every woman would need that. So basically the support medications that are given has to be kept to minimum and it has to be few. So, lot many medications are not needed for everyone, especially when you are taking your first IVF cycle. So, you have waited for uh, two weeks time, you take your test and I would say that okay, you have got pregnant and you will be really happy, then you have to continue or follow up with your doctor. So, I, uh, I think this was all the steps or step by step guide that you should be having for IVF treatment. It is very very simple though uh, it looks like it is very elaborate but it's really very simple and uh, you have to uh, talk to the doctor to understand and get that clarity i hope this helps and share it if you like this video to somebody with uh, whom you know uh, who may need this information so thank you for watching bye